Hello, good morning YouTube. Today we're going to talk about how to measure and mix lye. Uh, I'm using lye from Essential Depot and I'll put a link into the video on where to find that. And I highly recommend these pitchers that you purchase at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store. They're a heavyweight plastic. They're not thin and flimsy. And because they're tall and skinny, you can stir real well and not worry about it being splashed on you. Alright, so now the first thing we're going to do is um, put on my gloves. So hang on a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got on my heavy weight gloves. I highly recommend those. I don't think those thin, flimsy fl uh, gloves protect your hands enough because this stuff's really hot if it splashes. Um, so now, first, um, I'm going to turn off my scale and I'm going to um, put, I, I've already filled up all my water, so I guess that won't work. But let's, we'll do the lie that way. So I have got the water already measured in, and it's the same principle for the, um, for the lye as it is the water. And I've got a stainless steel whisk with a plastic handle. You only want to use plastic and stainless steel. Uh, glass jars, I'm told, will eventually break down and one day it will just pop. And you will get lye everywhere and the jar will break. So I'm going to put my lye container on there. I like that it has a handle and that the container fits inside this so I'm not trying to pour into a smaller topped container with a larger mouth opening. And I like that it has the little pour spout. So I'm going to turn on my, con on my scale. There we go. And it has zeroed out. I can pick it up and then put it back down and it is still zeroed out. And that's very important. Um, when you just tear, um, if you lift it just slightly, then when you put it back down, it weighs the container and what's in the container. So by turning it off and then turning it back on with the container empty and on it, it works the best. Okay. And so then we will do our lie. And I need 5.5 today. And so I'm going to just slowly shift it in. If you spill drops of the lye, you don't want to use a moist towel to clean it up. Um, you want to try to vacuum it away or sweep it away in a dry way because as long as lye is dry, it is not as harmful. But once it becomes moist, even from the sweat of your hand, it becomes uh, deadly. Okay, I just got a little bit over but because I have that little pour spout I can there we go I'm at 5.5 and so another thing I like is uh, I always I'm always doing a whole bunch of batches at one time so I put my whisk in the one that's gonna be done next so I know this one is next and so then I will pour it in and because the container that I'm pouring in is the way it is, I can tap and get all the residue. And then I'm going to whisk and I can whisk pretty hard because my container is tall and skinny. And I'll move this container. Um, if you can see how clear this water is and you see how cloudy that water is, um, it will become clear and that's when it's ready for use. Um, I don't use it until it becomes clear. Here's some I've already measured and you can see the difference in the clearness. But still it's not as clear as just plain water. But it is close. Um, and so you don't want to breathe the fumes. The fumes are very harmful. Uh, before I had a soap room, I had a, um, 
I always did it in the kitchen with the vent for the stove on. And a lot of people recommend that you do it outside, but I have dogs. And I would just die if one of my dogs knocked me, you know, tripped me up or knocked over my container and was injured by the lye water. And so I don't trust um, taking it and doing it outside. Oh, another method you can use, let me get one, is you can take a small dry spoon and you can then put it in your container and that's much safer and that would probably be the best route for my advice on how to do it so my whisk is in the next container so I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna dump and then whisk away And so ventilation is very important. Now I'm going to go back and do this one again. And do this one again. And do this one again. And then put it in the next container that's supposed to have lye. So I'm going to keep working on these. Um, all those crocs over there have got oil in them. And they're hot. And they are ready for soap are ready for lye so we can make soap. I'm going to do some more videos, so check my channel for some more new episodes of how to make soap. And I'm going to do a goat's milk, unscented oatmeal and honey. So stay with us. I forgot to mention that when you are mixing lye or soaping, never have any children anywhere near the process. Um, it is your choice when your child is old enough to fully understand the impact of lie and the damage that it could do to them. But until you feel that your child is old enough, which would be high teens for me, I think, <laughs> never have them anywhere near loose in the house, is my opinion, that they could come into where you're at, um when you're you know when your back is turned um lie is so deadly it can put your eyes out it'll take your skin off it is very very harmful um, i have two grandchildren and i have a child gate that i use when uh just when i'm not in here um to make sure that they can't even get into the room by accident and then uh, normally, I know you see me making soap normally at night, and that's because they are safely in their beds and in their house next door. But I won't normally risk making soap during the day um, if there's just the possibility that they could get in my house and, and, and I not realize it. Um, I read an article, it was a horror story, about a young mother with a two-year-old who reached up and grabbed the handle of the pitcher of lye and dumped it on his head and I cried through most of the story and I'm just telling everybody out there that's considering making soap make sure your children or any children that could be in your home are in a state that there is no way that they could possibly come in to where you're doing the lie and you're soaping uh, it is too dangerous today my daughter and her children are gone so I'm able to soap during the day but that's how serious I take it and I hope that everybody else out there will take it as seriously as I do because the thought of you being responsible for life-threatening injuries possible blindness or disfiguring scars and the loss of digits of your child or a child that you love is more than anyone should ever consider trying to live through. So take the precautions, be dogmatic about it, and you will never ever have to worry about it. 
Take risk with yourself, but do not take risk with children. Um, and that is my plea. <laughs> so, um, so we have completed our video on how to mix lye. And in a few moments, I'm going to do some more videos. And so you can watch my channel. And I'm sorry for such a sad, drastic note, but I, it's just so important that as a first-time soaper that you know that. Um, I'm very blessed that I read that article before I started making soap, so there's no possibility that I can ever make that mistake. So have a great day.